hi everyone thank you for watching the previous video on chapter 1 and chapter 2 hope you guys are able to spare some time to watch and learn i know it's quite hard to adapt the new norm but it's okay slowly but surely right all right now let us now continue the last subtopic for chapter 2 which is projectile motion at the end of this subtopic students should be able to describe the first one the projectile motion launch at an angle theta the second one the projectile motion launch at an angle theta is equal to zero degree and the last one projectile motion launch at theta is equal to 90 degrees which is the free fall motion before that, have we seen any example of projectile motion? There are many examples of projectile motion that we have seen in daily life. As we can see here, the water is coming out from the pipe hose and forming a curved path. The next one is the hammer throw event. As we observe, the hammer throne follow a curved path and land on the surface of the earth which it moves a longer path determined by gravity and air resistance. In other words, the hammer travels at a uniform velocity in horizontal direction and at the same time undergoing acceleration in downwards direction influenced by the gravity. This is what we call as projectile motion. The motion of the object through the air is in two-dimensional space. Projectile motion consists of two components. The first one is the X component. The velocity along horizontal component is constant. Thus, its horizontal acceleration AX is equal to zero. The second component is Y component. The motion along vertical component is influenced by the gravitational acceleration. Thus, its vertical acceleration Ay is equal to negative g. There are a few assumptions have been made about projectile motion. It is just to make it simple to be understood. If we put all these things into consideration, it will be unnecessarily difficult. In fact, even for real-world application, setting such a high calculation accuracy will be useless. Thus, the first assumption is free fall acceleration is constant and always directed downwards. We assume the only force acting vertically is gravity. The second assumption is we neglect the air resistance. In the absence of the air resistance, all objects fall with constant acceleration toward the surface of the earth. The question is, why do we ignore the air resistance? It is because in many situations, air resistance does not make a large difference, so we just simply ignore it. Now, we're going to see how the projectile motion looks like. Let's say here we have the horizontal displacement is given by the x-axis and the vertical displacement is given by the y-axis. Then, the object is projected in this direction with initial velocity u. It moves in two-dimensional space and follows a path as shown here. We have projected the object at some angle theta from the horizontal. We can say that the initial velocity has two components. The first one is the horizontal component which is ux ux is equal to u cos theta and the vertical component is ui ui is equal to u sine theta we can say that u cos theta is moving along x direction and u sine theta is moving along y direction. 
the particle now will be moving along this path. At this point, the object reached the maximum height, which is the highest point flown by the object, and we label as the capital H. And afterwards, the object will reach the ground once again. This will be the maximum horizontal displacement, or we call as range, and we label as capital R. And next one, the time taken from the object is projected here until it lands on the surface of the Earth. It's called as time flight. We label as capital T. The time flight is depending on the initial velocity of the object and the angle of the projection, projection theta. Now, at any instant of time, let's see the red dots here. It represents the velocity, the velocity changing regularly along the curve path. The direction of the velocity is initially upwards since the object height is increasing. And then, before it reaches the maximum height, the vertical velocity is decreasing. It is because the acceleration is in opposite direction. As the object reaches the maximum height here, the vertical velocity becomes zero. Afterwards, the vertical velocity increases after the maximum height. It is because the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. Now let's take at this point instant of time, the velocity will be V. such that it may an angle here as alpha with the horizontal. So here, we will have two components of velocity. One is along the horizontal component. We, is, we label as V cos alpha. Another one is along the vertical component which is V sine alpha. And lastly, we will talk about the acceleration of the particle. The only acceleration acted on the object is the gravitational acceleration. This vertical acceleration, G, is always equal to 9.81 meter per second square. And it is directed downwards at all point of the trajectory no matter how a projectile is launched and remember it is only acting along the vertical downwards direction to solve problems on projectile motion we treat the horizontal and vertical components separately and we can apply the kinematic equation to the x and y component of the motion so now, let us deduce the kinematic equation for projectile motion for both an X and Y component. Previously, from linear kinematic, we have a few equations such V. V is equal to U plus 80. V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. And lastly, S is equal to UD plus half AT square. For the X component, we will have VX is equal to UX plus AXT. Next, VX square is equal to UX square plus 2AX sx and lastly sx is equal to uxt plus half axt square since the x component is not influenced by the gravity 
Thus, the horizontal acceleration Ax is equal to zero. So, we will substitute Ax into this equation. And we know that any numbers multiplied by zero will get zero. So, this term here will be zero. So, the equation will be Vx is equal to Ux. Next, Vx square is equal to Ux square. Squaring both sides, we will have Vx is equal to Ux. And lastly, we will have Sx is equal to Uxt. And next, for y component, the equation will be vy is equal to is equal to uy plus ayt. Next one, vy square is equal to uy square plus two aysy. And lastly, we have sy is equal to uyt plus half ayt square. Since we know that the y component, the vertical component is influenced by the gravitational acceleration, this ay is equal to negative g. So what we're going to do is we will replace ay with negative g in this equation. So we will have vy is equal to ui minus gt. Next, vy square is equal to ui square minus 2gs. Why? And lastly, sy is equal to uyt minus half gt square. For the sake of everyone, here is a table of the kinematic equations for projectile motion in x and y components. The first case is projectile motion launched at any angle. There are two types from this case that you need to know. The first one is angle launch on level ground. We can see here the object is landing on the surface same level as it projected. The second one is angle launch from a certain height. Here the object is landing on the surface below the projected level. For both cases, the theta may vary in between 0 degree to 90 degrees. Second case is projectile motion launch at theta is equal to 0 degree, also called as zero launch angle. If an object is projected horizontally, there should be no angle of projection, so theta is equal to 0 degree. As you can see here, the plane is releasing the bomb at theta is equal to 0 degree. Thus, the x component of its initial velocity ux is equal to u cos 0 since cos 0 is equal to 1. So the x component of initial velocity is simply equal to u. Meanwhile, the y component of initial velocity uy is equal to u sine 0. Thus, it's equal to 0. Please remember, when an object is launched horizontally, ux is simply equal to its initial velocity and ui is equal to 0 meter per second. The third case is free fall motion where the object launch at theta is equal to 90 degrees. A free fall body is defined as a vertical motion of a body at constant acceleration g and the gravitational field without air resistance. In other words, 
is a linear vertical motion under the sole influence of gravity. In the Earth's gravitational field, constant acceleration is also known as acceleration due to gravity or gravitational acceleration, and its direction is always directed downwards to the center of the Earth with an acceleration A is equal to negative G. Value of G is equal to 9.81 meter per second square. And please take note in solving any problem involved freefall motion, the assumption made is we know their resistance. In chapter 1, we have learned that acceleration is a vector quantity, means it has magnitude and direction. Thus, the minus sign indicates the gravitational acceleration is always directed downwards. In order to solve problem related to free fall motion, we need to replace the A with negative G into the kinematic equation. And lastly, we also have other parameters in the kinematic equation which are vector quantities such displacement S, initial velocity U, final velocity V. So these parameters have direction. It could be positive or negative depending on their direction of motion. This positive and negative sign we call as sign convention. As we learned previously, we have here the linear motion equation. First one, P is equal to U plus AT. Second one, B square is equal to U square plus 2AS. And the third one, S is equal to UT plus half AT square. So for free fall motion, we're going to replace this A with negative G. So we would have free fall body equation, which first one, V is equal to U minus GT. Second one, V square is equal to U square minus 2GS. And the last one, S is equal to UT minus half GT square. So here, how we're going to determine the sign convention for initial velocity U, final velocity V, acceleration A, and displacement S. For an object is released from rest, the initial velocity U is equal to zero. The final velocity is negative. The acceleration A is equal to negative G, and displacement is negative H. For an object is thrown downwards, the initial velocity u is negative, the final velocity is also negative, the acceleration a is equal to negative g, and the displacement s is equal to negative h. For an object is thrown upwards, the initial velocity is positive, the final velocity v is equal to zero, the acceleration is equal to negative g, and the displacement s is equal to positive h. The sign convention is very important to indicate the direction of motion. And again, what is sign convention? Sign convention is the positive and negative sign in front of the value of the parameter. That's all for projectile motion. Hope you guys understand or for at least grab the idea. Thank you and happy learning.